Okay, I've put together kind of a flow sheet here to hopefully help you out a little bit. Um, it's This is more um, of an algorithmic solution than I like to use. I would rather you work out what's going on behind the scenes here and have figured out this from dimensional analysis. But uh, it looks like from homework six folks are having some trouble, so I thought I would uh, layer in some help to try to get you there. So look at my conversion factors here. So if I have the mass of an element and I want the moles of that same element, I can use the factor moles per gram, right? Or if I have the moles and I want to get to the mass, I can use grams per mole. So these, these two directional arrows here, all I have done is flipped over this factor. And this is the one that we calculate the formula mass on the periodic table. So if I have the mass of, let's say, carbon, all I need is that there's one mole of carbon for every 12.011 grams. That's the number straight off of the periodic table. It's the average mass of carbon. So using that 1 over 12.011 gets me to the moles because the grams will cancel out. Conversely, if I have uh, one mole of carbon, I can multiply by the 12.011 grams per one mole, and it gets me back to the grams here. So I can go either direction, but I've got to set this conversion factor up the right way. And then I think a lot of people had more trouble with when to use the Avogadro number 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Well, that's if I want to go from moles to how many things. So if I have one mole of carbon atoms, I multiply by 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms per one mole. Moles cancels, then I have how many atoms of. Conversely, I can do a one mole over 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd to get back to moles. Uh, in the green down here, there's a little bit more complicating when we have a compound. So this first part, you can go the same way, mass of the compound to moles by the formula weight, but you have to get the total formula weight, right? For like carbon monoxide is one carbon and one oxygen, so I've got to add the 1 times 12.011 to the 1 times 15.9994 and get a total mass for carbon monoxide. And then I can use that, that conversion rate to get the moles of the compound. I can use the 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd to get to the number of formula units, in the case of ionic, which we're doing mostly, or the number of molecules. They, the, ter the terms matter later, but for right now, they are functionally equivalent. Uh, they work the same way is what I mean by that. So you use the 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd to get to the counts. But then there's the added complication of, in the, ca in the case of carbon monoxide, if I'm asking you how many total atoms, well, there are two atoms, one carbon and one oxygen, per formula unit. So I would multiply that count of formula units times two atoms per formula unit to get to the number of atoms. Or for H2O, I might use three atoms total per formula unit, or I might use, if the question is asking you how many hydrogens, I might ask, um, I might use two hydrogen atoms per one formula unit to get that to cancel out and get a count of the atoms. Okay, looks like uh, everyone did pretty well with question one. Uh, so I'm gonna walk through this and see if I can see where the problem arises. Y'all seem to know that uh, H2O, so I need two times the mass of the hydrogen and one of the oxy oxygen. So two times 1.00794 Daltons. And then I'm writing with the mouse on the screen. That's why it looks so horrible, by the way. Well, one reason my handwriting's not great anyway, I guess, but plus one times 15.9994, again, Daltons, and 
and then I'll just go ahead and round off in the process. That's what those uh, curvy equals look like. Uh, and we're going to get that 18.02 Daltons for every molecule of water. All right, so like I said, everybody, everybody did fine on that one, and I need to see what causes the breakdown of future problems from there. Okay, wondering if this is where some of our issue happens to come in. Um, the term molar mass is when we shift the meaning of that average atomic mass that we've been doing in AMU or Dalton's. When we shift this to mean the mass in grams of an individual mole of the material, so grams per mole. But remember, it has the same numeric value as when we do that um, from, straight from the table for individual atoms or compounds. So let's walk through the calcium carbonate here. Now there's an, a couple of additional issues in that we need to know what calcium carbonate is. So calcium is in group 2 or 2A, two so that means it has to have a charge that you have to know everything in that group is going to be 2 plus. Now carbonate, carbonate is one of your polyatomic anions and so you're going to get it off your chart, look it up, memorize it. I've memorized it because I use it so much. Uh, CO3, I'll put parentheses around it to show that charge. It's got a 2 minus. So now I've got to combine those together and look, a 2 plus and a 2 minus, it's going to only take one of each of those to work. So my formula is just going to be Ca CO3. Now that we have the formula, we're right at the point where we were on the Q1, and we can say 1, because there's 1 calcium, 1 times the mass of calcium. I've got, let's just use 40.08, round off a little bit. Now, don't worry about sig figs here. Uh, I am rounding off, and you have no idea why I rounded off that much. Uh, and I didn't sweat sig figs very much on this um, assignment because there's so many other things going on. Uh, so if you round it off to a little bit different point, I didn't worry about it here. So plus um, we have one carbon, so one times 12.011 grams per mole. And then we have three oxygens, so three times 15.9994 grams per mole. All right. So now I'm literally just going to crunch that in my calculator just like it is. So one times 40.08 plus, uh oh, forgot to clear my calculator. All right, 40.08 plus 1 times 12.011 plus 3 times 15.9994. And I'm going to get 100.0892, or just rounding off to 100.0892. Grams per mole. So every mole of this compound is going to have a mass of 100.09 grams. All right, looking at question three, first of all, I'm glad that most of you got this. Um, but there, there could be, you could run into a problem with saying, hey, wait, I, I don't know what a propane is, right? Now, later we're going to talk about how you figure out what propane means and what's in it. But Right now, you don't care. 
it does not matter because I'm just going to ask you how many how many propane molecules. So if you go back to that um, chart that I gave you originally, we got moles and we want to get to count. So I'm just going to do 2.000 moles of of the thing, and I don't care what the thing it is, times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, so 23. All right, and I'm just going to put things. Because I don't care what the things are here. Per one mole. So if I multiply this through, right, what happens? My thing, my moles cancels out, leaving things. In this case, the things are propanes, but like I said, it doesn't matter, right? So 6.022 times 10 to the 23. So I get, uh, that yellow color doesn't show up very well. I'm going to go back to my blue here. 1.0. Two zero four four. I'm just going to go ahead and round it off to the answer of precision. Times ten to the twenty-three. Oh no, nope, that's twenty-four. I'm racing. Yeah, twenty-four. And then so now I'm going to go back and get my these propines. Later, we're going to learn that a propane is three carbons with eight hydrogens attached to it, but you don't care about that right now because all you need to know is how many of those things they are, and it doesn't matter what the things are. Okay, so in this case, we're still in that first set of arrows. Um, we are not in that first set of arrows. We're in the second set of arrows there where... We're going to go from counts, so I know how many of something there are, and I want to get to moles. Okay, so since we're since we're dealing with counts of things, we're counting atoms here. Um, we're going to need Avogadro's number, the 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. So we have atoms. O O times 10 to the sixth atoms. Uh, let's just make, let's go ahead and just call that HEs. All right. Now, when I set up my conversion factor here, think about where I'm going to need to put what. So I'm going to use moles and HEs. Well, I want to get rid of HEs this time, so I'm going to put moles on top. So one mole per 6.022 E23. And remember that this works for moles of anything. In this case, moles of HE. But it doesn't matter what the things are. The number is the same. So what's going to cancel? HE is going to cancel, leaving. Where's my 6.022? Now it's on the bottom, right? So 1 divided by, 1.00 divided by 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And I get 1.6. 06 or 66 times 10 to the negative 24. So I stole this question and I don't know I don't know what the other professor that did these came up with and how he got those distractors, but it looks like it got some of you. And uh, so I'm wondering, if you guys could let me know 
what happened here. Um, how did that get you? Should have been 1.66 times 10 to the negative 24th moles. <laughs> All right. Uh, looks like this one beat folks up pretty bad. Just over half of you got there. So we do have multiple steps involved this time. So we got to work out. Let's see. Well, we've got our formula, so we don't have to create what carbon monoxide is. That is carbon monoxide, so we don't have to do that part. But we do have to work out the formula mass because it's not CO is not just on the table by itself. All right, so let's do that part first. Let's say this is, we've got one carbon. That is 12.011 grams per mole. And then we've got plus, we've got one oxygen, so one times 15.9994 grams per mole. So. So I get 28.0104 uh, grams per mole. Now that's more sig figs. Now notice this. Um, I pointed this out to somebody right in a different one. I'm only going to need four sigs at the end, but I'm going to keep more than that right now so it doesn't screw me up somewhere along the way. So 28.0104 grams per mole. And that's for the formula unit, or well, a molecule in this case, for carbon monoxide. Okay, cool, we got that. So now we know that we have how many moles, how many grams? We've got 2.801 grams to start with. Okay, so looking at my algorithmic process at the beginning of this thing. So if I've got grams and I want to go to moles, well then I can just use that molar conversion. But since I want grams to cancel, it's going to need to go on bottom and moles going to go on top. So this right here has grams on top and moles on bottom. So you just flip it over. One mole, 28 dot zero one zero four grams multiply grams canceling so two point eight zero one on top twenty eight point zero one zero four I stole this question also and I see why they used the numbers that they did because twenty eight point oh two point eight oh one divided by twenty eight point oh one you're gonna get zero point one Oh, we've got more people than I thought. Let's see. No, I got you. Not done with the problem. We have another step to go. 0.100. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4. So I could get to that many six if this were my final answer. It isn't. Um, that canceling color there that's going to cancel and that's going to cancel I'm going to have moles I'm going to keep at least one more uh, sig fig right now in case I need it okay so now uh, I still need to get to number of molecules so that's another step in that algorithmic process 0, 0.0 oh erase that 0.1 Zero, 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 zero moles. Times how many things per mole? So we need moles on bottom so that it will cancel out. Things on top. We don't care what the things are. They're COs here. We don't care. One mole always has... 6.022 times 
times 10 to the 23rd. I'm going to get rid of the C over here because we don't really need it. It doesn't really matter. So, moles is going to cancel. Leaving you, well, that's just going to move the power. So, 6.022. Times 10 to the 21, uh, 22. That's a 3? Yeah, that's a 3 because that's Avogadro's number. So that should be a 3. Multiply by 0.1. Now we should be at 22. Things, in this case the things being COs. All right. All right, so this one's actually easier because we did this on the previous problem with exactly the same thing, uh, and we got 0 0.1. So um, probably this is the same group of folks uh, that got that one, and I don't like the idea that I double tested on this. So uh, on the on the redo, um, I'm not including a, a repeat of the same question. So. Um, because you've already had to calculate it in the previous one. All right. Um, to start with, everybody has credit on this question if you tried, because the correct answer is not here. Again, I stole this uh, question, and I believe what the person has done is that um, they considered the carbon and two of the hydrogens when they were getting the formula mass instead of all four, and then you get this answer. But I give everybody credit because the correct answer was not here. On the uh, redo that I'm putting together, that won't be a problem because you're going to enter the answer, whatever you get, uh, because retests are always a little harder than the original. All right, let's see. We're starting with 14.0269 grams. Now we're going to need that formula mass. So let's see. Let's work out the formula mass. So I've got 1 times 12.011 grams per mole plus, but I've got four hydrogens. Four times 1.00789. Four grams per mole. All right, so that's going to give me. I'll get out of my calculator now. Twelve point oh one one plus four times one point oh oh seven nine four. I get sixteen dot oh four two seven six. That is grams per or over one mole. All right. So I cannot use this like I've got it set up because here grams is what I want to get rid of. It's going to be on top and I put that one under it. So I'm going to have to use this but upside down because I'm going to have to put one mole on top. And my 16.04276 grams on the bottom. All right. Canceling my grams, leaving moles. I get 0 0.874, let's see what we got, 6, 6, I only use, well, okay, let's see, 3, 4, 4, um, 
pulse. All right, so then I'm going to take that number. So now I'm going to try to go to counts, right? So that's where you're going to have to get Avogadro's number involved. So how many things per one mole? Technically, I should go look up the longer number. I'm just going to use, because I'm frustrated, I've already recorded this question three times. So I'm just going to use the one that I've already memorized, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Things, what are my things in this case? CH4s. They're CH4s because we're working with grams of CH4 here, moles of CH4, right? So, it's, yeah, so we've still got CH4s here. All right, so. 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. So I have 5.2653 times 10 to the 23rd. CH4s. But now I have to add a step here because looking for carbon atoms. Now in this case it doesn't actually change anything, but if I were looking for hydrogen atoms it would have changed it. In this case I have one carbon per one CH4. And you can do this, it's not, I don't know if it's technically a thing or not, but you can cancel those. We're going to do that a lot when we get to reactions just like they're units. They're not really units, but they sort of work the same. But you get the same number. Five point, how many do we have? So we had six to start with. I only used 6.022, which is four six. So I'm gonna only keep two, not four. Um, so unfortunate, but. And again, like I said, there's an answer is not there and everybody has credit. On the redo, you have to enter that value yourself um, in an in a open blank constructed answer type. So, Because uh, the redos are always just a tad harder. All right, so question eight is going to take everything just a step further. So um, this time we're not going to end up with um, right at one mole. Uh, I think this one was originally designed to get to two. Uh, let's see where it does get. So uh, 28.05376 grams. Now we have from the previous problem, we already have the formula mass or molar mass of methane. So I'm just going to reuse it instead of calculating it again. But again, it's going to, the grams is going to need to go on bottom. So for every one mole of methane, you have 16.04276 grams. I get one point seven five ish four eight six nine for now. Uh, we have moles. All right, 
So then take that. We need, let's see, we're going to get to counts. We're getting counting numbers. All right, so I'm going to have to get rid of moles and get a number of things. So 0. 0.74869 moles. So this is, if you look back to that chart, the, the algorithmic process, this is where I'm going to cancel out moles and say for a mole of things, whatever those things are, there's so that's a six. 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of those things, right? Those things in this case. So where are we getting to? That formula mass there was for methane as a whole. So that's where we're getting to because that mole is of methane. CH fours. Okay. Those moles cancel. Giving me one point oh five three one twenty four. CH4s. Right, so molecules of CH4, and I still need to do that little trick I showed you on the last one where we look for the number of carbon atoms in this. It's just going to be one carbon for every one molecule of CH4. So the same number, one point. 0.053 times 10 to the 24. All right, so again, correct answer is not there, so I need to go through and give everybody credit for this one uh, because that's not one of your options here. So I'll do that uh, and then uh, continue with the next problem. Essentially the same problem again, uh, different numbers, 25, Point oh 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 grams of CH4 times one mole per sixteen point oh four two seven six. grams. All right, I'm going to do another thing with this and start laying this all out as one long string. I've seen some of you do that on some of your stuff. Um, and if you're comfortable, once you get comfortable with these, it's okay to do. Just be careful that things do cancel out like you intend for them to. So my grams are going to cancel. I've got moles, right? But now I need to get to a count. So I need 6.022 E23 uh, CH4s per mole and moles will cancel and then I'm still going to need to get to carbons so 1C or one CH4. Give me how many carbon atoms at the end? Just kind of run straight through across the top. 25 times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. So on the top, I'd get 1.5 times 10 to the 25th, but then I'm going to divide by the bottom, 1 times 1 times 16.0, 427, and I'm going to get a final answer of 938-ish.
now technically I should have gone and looked up a better value of that um, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd we know an exact value and I should have used it here to get my six big uh, six bigs but um, anyway this is the process of working the problem so it, it turns out that if you record a slide and then you accidentally hit record again after you have stopped it starts over recording the slide and so we get to do this one all again okay so we have a different molecule this time we have propane C3H8 so that's going to change a few things as we go through this now we've got to recalculate our formula mass because we have three times the carbon mass plus eight times the hydrogen mass notice that uh, I've done better on my SIGs this time I've got um, five SIGs to start with so I went to a better periodic table and got you a better value for the carbon mass and this was still the best I could get on the hydrogen mass so we'll have a, a little bit more precise um, formula mass to start with here uh, if that bothers you on an exam if you're like I need a better formula weight than what I have on this exam let me know and I'll give that to you if you need it or I'll make a notation to ignore it uh, when I'm grading your exam all right so I've run it all together as a string here so I've got our starting value 44.094 grams right uh, there's just not an equals there that that's where I was underlining it originally when I was talking through it um, and then I'm going to multiply by one mole per this grams that's our molar mass conversion right so grams are going to cancel there and I went ahead and stuck the, the Avogadro's on there because we're looking for numbers right there's our number of carbons so we're looking for that uh, so I need to get rid of moles and get to how many molecules I have so 6.02192 times 10 to the 23rd um, molecules of propane now though this is the first time we have this scenario where we've got not a one so if you look at this you've got in the formula here you see that we've got three carbons so there are three carbons for every one molecule of propane so when you multiply that through you get 1.800 1.8066 times 10 to the 24th carbons closest to this answer right here so make sure you practice this one I'm going to roll those last few problems into one problem like this because you kind of get to practice everything in the same problem. Okay, and so one last problem here, and I have literally just copied the uh, information from the question 10 here uh, because we still got uh, propane. We've still got the same mass of propane. Everything is exactly the same until you get to the very end here. So the only difference is this question is going to ask us about hydrogen atoms so um, we've gotten down to our 6.0219 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of propane but now per one molecule how many hydrogens do I have again it just comes from that subscript there and there are eight hydrogens in this molecule for answer of 4.822 times 10 to the 24th hydrogens okay so that's a walkthrough of them. I am putting together a redo of this homework and I will post it for you to give it a try. Now, when you work through this, um, you're going to have to enter all the numbers yourself instead of just choosing a multiple choice. So I know that adds a, a level of difficulty, but it is more like what you're going to see on the exams. So give it a try. Uh, let me know where you are on this. I strongly recommend that you read the relevant sections in the text as well because I'm going to start asking you guys, well, okay, so 
when you read in the text, what's it tell you to do there? It may have a little different approach than I do, but all of the math has to work out in the end, or one of us is not doing it right. We've got to fix that. So, All right, let me know how I can help further.